Hey everyone, Dr. Nussi from EasyDOTPhysicals.com back again with another video. In this video, I am going to be reviewing an article that I just read, a recent article from March of 2025, so just a few months ago, on WebMD, reviewed by a medical doctor over there, and it pertains to how long THC marijuana weed stays in your system and can be detected on typical drug tests. So I'm going to go over the different types of drug tests and and give you their uh, impression on how long that it can be detected and, and explain to you why I don't necessarily agree with all of their time frames and why their time frames may be a little inaccurate. Again, in my opinion, first, thanks to all the subscribers to this channel and especially the members because they help keep this channel going. You know YouTube hates marijuana related content, so it's very difficult to monetize these types of videos. And also, if you have an upcoming drug test, an official drug test, check in the description of this video for our master, cl master class that helps get people prepared, best prepared to pass an upcoming drug test, as well as my preferred home drug tests. They're cheap, easy to use in the privacy of your own home. You get them directly on Amazon and you'll know exactly where you stand before that drug test. So let's scroll down here. How long does weed stay in your system? And first, we'll just go through different methods. So the blood test, they're saying up to 12 hours after you stop using. Hair test, up to 90 days. A saliva test, up to 24 hours. And then a pee test, up to 30 days. But we will break that down even further here later in this article. I tend to agree with most of this here. Blood test, up to 20 hours. Yes, I agree. Hair test is pretty spot on, 90 days, because hair grows about a half an inch a month and they test about the first uh, inch and a half of hair with a hair test and THC never leaves your hair. The metabolites never leave your hair. So if they test that first inch and a half, you get about 90 days that you can test it for. Saliva test, about 24 hours, maybe a little bit more I've read. Uh, and then the urine test. So let's scroll down and look at the urine test. So they've got a whole section here on how long does THC stay in urine. All right, so it's important to understand how THC is metabolized in the body and why it's different than other drugs. So when you ingest THC, in order for it to make it to your urine, it has to be broken down. The metabolites have to be broken down. But THC is also fat soluble. So it can be stored in your body fat and then re-released later in time and then metabolized and then be released in your urine. So let me use an analogy here that I hope makes sense. So let's say you're pretty fit, you're pretty active, and you go to McDonald's and you get a quarter pounder with cheese, a large fry, and a large soda, and you eat all of that, and then you go back to a regular normal diet. Are you going to put on a whole bunch of body fat because you had that one high fat, high calorie meal? The answer is no. Your body's going to process through those calories and get rid of them. But what if you go to McDonald's three times a day consistently and you're not very active and you do that over and over day after day after day, your body is going to be overwhelmed with those calories. And what happens when your body's overwhelmed with calories is they start getting stored up as body fat and you start putting on body fat. So your body becomes overwhelmed. THC is kind of similar. And ironically, it actually uses the body fat to be stored in. Body fat is what is like a storage locker for THC. So that's going to play into these numbers that they are citing here, and I'm going to explain to you why I'm not in complete agreement with these numbers. So here is what they say, how long THC stays in your urine. A one-time use is up to three days, and that's because typical THC metabolism gets broken down in your liver, the metabolites uh, get released, they go into your urine, and then your body can eliminate them within three days if you use it once. So it's just like if you go to McDonald's one time. You don't overload your system with calories, so they don't need to store them up. They can be used up and, uh, you know, similarly eliminated. So this is pretty correct, even if you've got a high body fat percentage. And again, a high body fat percentage means a higher capacity to store THC. If you use one time, and one time means a, a reasonable use. So something like you smoke one joint, uh, you know, one regular session. Again, if you go to McDonald's one time and you eat 10 cheeseburgers and 10 fries, you're going to put on body fat. But one normal use and what they typically, what, what is typically thought of as normal use is 
one regular session, like one joint or something like that. One time use is going to be probably about three days, no matter how active you are, no matter how much body fat you have. Now, they're defining moderate use as four times a week. So something like smoking a joint every other day, something like that. And then they say that it will be up to five to seven days. Now here is where you start having the issue because if you use marijuana on a Monday and then you give yourself through Tuesday, you're not using and you're starting that detox process and then you use again on Wednesday and then you start that detox again process on Thursday and then you use again on Friday, but you're not using in between those days. That's not giving yourself that three days up here to completely detox. So is it going to be just five to seven days? It kind of depends on how long you are a moderate user. If you're a moderate user for years, use smoke one joint every other day for years, this is going to be longer than five to seven days. I'm sorry, that's just the way that it's going to be. And again, if you're using um, more in that one session, then this number obviously goes up. So I don't agree with this moderate use five to seven days. I think that's pretty conservative. Now, next category is once daily use. So using every single day. And I don't know really where they get these numbers from. These seem like just random estimates to me. But if you're using every day, even if you're just using a normal amount, one joint or whatever, that kind of amount uh, once daily, you are going to overwhelm your system. You're going to put more THC into your system than your body can eliminate. And now it starts depending on how much body fat you have. If you're very slim, have very low body fat, and you're using once daily, maybe I could see 10 to 15 days because you're, you're still going to be storing some THC up in your body fat, but you don't have enough body fat to store THC in amounts to make this even potentially longer. Now, if you've got a relatively higher body fat percentage and you're using one time every day, pretty consistently, daily use, this number is going to be much higher. I can tell you right now, this is going to be like a 30 day number after stopping use. 30 days, you're still going to be able to test positive for. So this really starts depending on how much body fat you have because that's your capacity to store THC. And if you're using every day, even once daily, every single day, you're overwhelming your body's potential to metabolize that THC, break it down into metabolites, and then excrete it. And it starts backing up in your system and being stored in your body fat. Again, just like if you were having McDonald's for every meal every day, or, or even uh, one meal every single day, even if you were to eat healthy the rest of the time, you would start putting on body fat, most likely, again, unless you're very, very active or have this crazy high metabolism or whatever. But so that's kind of what's happening here. Now, for heavy use, and they don't even define heavy use, but heavy use would be using every day, multiple times a day, you know, using fairly regularly, 30 days or more. 30 days is going to be the absolute minimum after stopping use. And that's even, that's maybe, maybe 30 days would be possible if you have, again, relatively low body fat because you just don't have enough fat to store enough THC to later be released into your bloodstream to make you test positive at a later date. But if you've got a high body fat percentage, 30 days is going to be a pretty conservative guesstimate, I would think here, because you're put all this THC in your system, it's all being stored up in your body fat. And then as your body fat breaks down over time, it's getting released kind of consistently into your bloodstream. And it's going to take a long time for all of that to come out of your body fat. Now, there are things that you can do to help speed this process along. Again, we go through those in our masterclass. Again, that's a free masterclass. Uh, the link is in the description box below. But there's not really anything you can do to get under this three days. That's what a few days is what other typical drugs like the five panel drugs, cocaine, amphetamines, things like that. They stay in your system for a few days, maybe a week or something like that. There's no real way after stopping use to get it out of your system in less than three days. But there are certainly ways 
to make these other times as moderate use once daily use or heavy use times uh, lesson. Again, we go over those in the master class. It's not about cheating the test. It's about bringing THC in alignment with the other drugs that are typically tested for like on a five panel. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Again, that's a little update here on the many videos I've done on how long THC weed marijuana stays in your system. And I thought it was important because this is an update from 2025. All right, until next time, everyone, stay safe.